Hey, I'm Jake, and for this video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys my geeky custom Logic Pro shortcuts that I've found to be very helpful for all of my Logic sessions. And before we begin, I'd like to say thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So Skillshare is an amazing online learning platform that features thousands of classes ranging from animation, creative writing, video editing, music production, and so much more. It's consistently launching premium classes that allows you to follow your creative endeavors at an affordable price of $10 a month with an annual subscription. What I really love about these classes is that they are so well structured. So if you're a beginner in a certain subject like mixing or beat making in a specific DAW, Skillshare's platform will guide you from beginning to end. For me personally, I'm looking into Young Guru's Learn How to Mix Music online class. I used to scavenge the internet and watch all of his interviews and it makes me really happy to know that all of us now have the opportunity to learn from these great people on Skillshare's platform. Okay, so in order for you guys to follow along, I'm going to press option K and that will bring up my key commands. I'm going to click customize and used and what you're going to see right now are all the custom key commands that I've personally selected and assigned. You can assign a key command by typing, you can search for it first. When you find what you want to change, you click it and you press learn key label and then you can assign things. I've made sure that all the key labels I've assigned are not conflicting with the current key commands that Logic comes with. So the first key command that I want to talk about is the tap tempo. I have mine set at shift command spacebar. And when I do that, what happens is you see this ruler over here, it turns blue. And as long as I hold shift and command and just tap the spacebar, one, two, three, four, five, six, the tempo here changes. So let's do that again. One, two, three, four, five. Now it's at a hundred. The next key command I want to talk about is it has to do with saving real estate and cleaning up visual clutter. First things first, I like hiding this control bar when I get to the mixing stage or the arranging stage. I already have all the recordings done. I know the tempo. I don't need this information at the later stages of my production or yeah, post-production session. So you can click in between the control bar and the arrangement view and drag it but I find that to be kind of annoying because of how precise you need to be so the key command I've set up I believe it's here show slash high control bar is control option command and the backwards slash key so when I do that it hides the control bar and I find this to be very useful just for saving space. I'm using a 13 inch screen, so I want to get as much real estate as I can. The next thing is I'm a very, very OCD person when it comes to visual clutter. So you see these white lines, the grid. I really don't like seeing that when I'm trying to focus on finishing up a song. So the key command I use for that is control option command and the right bracket. And that just hides it. If I press it again, it'll show it. So it's like a show and hide option. I find that useful. I think the screen just looks cleaner and it helps me concentrate just a little bit better. And it's over, let's see, it's over here. Show slash hide background grid lines. I find that to be really, really, really useful. The next thing I want to talk about, and this is from a friend, his name is Ven. Uh, I better thank him for this. It's about pack folders. So I am not 100% sure if this is true, but it just, it has worked for me. Logic has a bit of graphic user interface lag when your sessions get a bit big. So what I like to do is I like to create pack folders. I'm going to show you how to do it without, without the shortcut. So I press command A, I right click, this is to select all the regions that I want to pack. And I right click one region. I go down a folder and I press pack folder. My custom key command is shift command P. So I do that and then everything gets packed 
into this folder. And if you want to see what's want to see the instruments again, you just double click it and the whole thing shows up here. And when you double click again, you're back in the normal arrangement view outside of the folder. This is a, yeah, it's a folder file. It's not something you mix with. It's just a way to organize. And what you can do is delete all of these guys. Let me just check. Yep, you can delete all of these guys. And you may be wondering, hey, where do I get it? As, as you know, you double click and your whole session's here. And I personally like this because I like keeping things very minimal. So when I have something good going, I can just already divide the sections. I treat this kind of like a marker where I can just rearrange entire, entire sections, right? I can just copy it over. And I find that this helps a lot when I'm dealing with GUI issues, when my session is getting a little bit too big and everything's getting a bit stuttery graphic wise. This helps a lot. The other thing is it allows me to focus on different sections. So if I want the least amount of clutter and focus on, a, on adding maybe fine details, I will use the pack folder for the main sounds and I'll add whatever I need to. And the great thing about this is that you can make folders <laughs> upon folders. There you go. Now let's just delete everything. You click, you double click again, and you double click and you double click. It's based chronologically on when you make the pack folder. If you want to unpack the folder and get back to your normal session, sorry guys, I'm just cleaning this up. My custom key command is shift option command P. Or you could just the right, you could just right click the region, go to folder, and say unpack folder to new tracks. Mine is set to unpack folder to existing tracks. So I, I'll press shift, option, command P, and I have my entire session in the main arrangement view. Pack folders are pretty useful also for quickly arranging uh, drum samples. So I'm going to put back the grid line with that key command we just talked about. I'm going to make a new audio file. I'm going to press, I'm going to find a sample. Let's say this sample, what a pack folder does is it organizes your sample to stretch from one bar to two bars. So if I pack this guy, shift command P, it packs it to one to two bars. And the reason why I like this is because I can just press command R and I find that easier for arranging. And if I wanted to add fine details, maybe add another snare at this point. I can just double click it, highlight, just drag it there, and the snare moves there. And if I want to unpack it, I'll just highlight these guys and press Shift, Option, Command, P. If you're ever in my live stream, you'll notice that I do that, and it just helps me arrange things just a little bit faster. The next thing I'd like to talk about are these, everything that has to do with uh, quantizing and the snap modes. This is the setting that I use to change the division value. And obviously, this is where the snap mode is. If you guys don't have this option here, this division value, if your control bar doesn't look like mine and it looks like this, just click the arrow to the very right of the control bar in the middle section that's kind of blue. Left click it, type custom. Just right click an empty space if you, don't, if you still don't see this and say customize control bar and display and just click time signature slash division. So I'm going to press OK. I think this has been one of the craziest features I like about Logic Pro X. And it has to do with the snap mode and the division value. Let me get a hi-hat. Okay, let's just get this one. I'm going to explain what things normally are like when you don't change these set, uh, settings and what they can end up being like. So if I click this guy, this sample, and I drag it, and I want to drag it into to another eighth, and drag these two, and I want to make an eighth note hi-hat pattern. Let's just lower this volume. 
This is what I have to do, right? Drag it. Notice how when I'm dragging, it's going in between the grid line. And I want mine to just snap and move by the grid line only. So I will change the snap mode from smart to division. And notice now when I drag it, it doesn't go in between. It just hops right to the next, the next line that you see. Now, this is hopping by 16th notes because the grid value is in 16th. So if I click it and I say, change it to eighth notes, and I drag these, this guy again, it will now drag in eighths. I set key commands to that. So here they are. So this is the division value. I can set, I can set it to the next higher division by pressing shift command one. So this will go from eight, an eighth note to a 16th note division and so forth when I press shift command one. And the other way, shift command two will move to a uh, lower division. So I find this to be very, very useful. And then for the snap mode, I just have it at control option command minus. And for the smart mode, I have it at control option command equal sign. So I can just toggle between both really quick. And I can do something like this. So that's something pretty handy. But this doesn't only work in the arrangement view. This also works in the MIDI mode view. So I'm going to click a MIDI region, and I'm going to press Command 4. That will open it up in a separate window. You could also just double click it. It's the same thing. I guess we'll stick, we'll stick to this. So if I change the grid view, Shift, Command 2, look at these lines. They change as well. If I am on the MIDI view and I press Control, uh, Control Option Command minus, it'll switch to Division Control Option Command plus Smart Mode, and you can do the exact same thing with MIDI. If I go back to Smart, you can go in between. If I'm back at Division, it will snap. This has another function. Let's say we're in the smart mode, right? And we go to the brush tool and we change this to one half. If you're using the brush tool in smart mode and you try to add another note, maybe somewhere in between, but you're set at your time quantized to one half, you can't you can't drag it, you can't make a note in between a half note. The way around that, I don't know if that made sense, but hopefully it did. The way around that is to change your snap mode to division. So if I change it to division now, I'm on my brush tool, right? And I press any of the grid lines, it will now create a one half note length wherever, uh, wherever the grid line is clicked on. I really hope that made sense. So the other key command that I have actually is this time quantize feature. I have it set to option one and option two. So it's related to this guy over here, setting the division value. The time quantize is related to that. I've set it at option one and two instead of shift command one and shift command two. So that just helps me remember that it's kind of related. This is really cool when you're using the brush tool. So let's go back to the smart division. I'm gonna press control option command plus and the sn uh, snap mode is back to smart. Now I'm gonna use my brush tool by pressing T and B. Well, let's just do that slower, T and brush tool. So if I press uh, option one, I can go to a low, uh, higher division if I press option two, it'll go to a lower division. And that allows me to make fun patterns. So there are a lot of ways to work around this kind of workflow.
All right, I think I have maybe two more shortcuts. So this is some really, really nerdy, nerdy stuff. So I'm going to find a loop. Let's get this one, for example. Let's drag it into the, into the arrangement view. I'm sure a lot of you have experienced this. You find a loop, and then you start chopping it up. So you press T, and you'll find your scissors tool, so T and I, and you'll do something like this. I've done this a lot, and you chop the specific part that you want. Maybe there's an occasion where you're like, you know what, I just wish everything was automatically chopped on its own in the arrangement view. So I actually found a shortcut, and it's the slice at transient mark shortcut. I've set mine to shift command zero. So when I do that, it finds all the transients, the zero crossing point, and it divides it, it chops it up for you. And if I want to addition a part on its own, I'll just click the specific, the, the specific slice and press option spacebar. Press spacebar to stop again, and then go find another chop. And I find that to be really, really useful. So it helps me arrange uh, loop samples with a lot more ease. The last thing, <laughs> this is really, really nerdy. Let's say I select a region and I select, uh, select this region, that region, this region. And I say to myself, oh, I wanna change the volume of the tracks with these three, in these three regions, you'd have to click things one by one, right? So you'd be like, okay, we have this one. Oh, you've now deselected your regions. And you're like, okay, I have to find it again. This is, <laughs> I'm not sure if any of you have experienced that. So let's do that again. I click this region, this region, that region. And I, I wanna select their corresponding tracks in the mixer. I, I found a shortcut for that, and it's over here. Select tracks or of selected regions slash cell slash folders and minus control option command period. So now when I press that, it selects all the tracks. I don't know why anyone will want that, but I'm kind of happy with that. So <laughs> maybe somebody will find it useful. So these are the shortcuts that I've customized and I hope maybe you find out if you like them too, use them for yourself and also just to show you guys. This is how many shortcuts I have that are unused. So there's a lot of things to explore here. Anyhow, I hope this video helped and take care.